for any kind of adversity, natural, in this case political, um, we all come together at the end and we all work together to try to rebuild uh, a better future for ourselves. And Aww. I think uh, I think that's what's going to happen, whether whoever wins and um, hopefully we'll get the results soon. Right. So let me ask you guys, uh, I posed it a couple of breaks ago. What about uh, Lieutenant Governor Ray Tenorio? You know, what's what's next for him? Uh, obviously, I know you want to say a runoff election, but. You know, after that, how does he uh, turn the page and how does he take this? Um, you know, I had a conversation with him this morning and um, he said, you know, you don't get uh, anything you don't earn or ask for. And he said he likes to do both. And uh, we exchanged some uh, thoughts about some of the stories I've done. And, uh, you know, I said, <coughs> I hope at the end of the day you don't take it personal. And he said, well, it's hard not to, but, you know, we're just both out here trying to uh, do our uh, job. So how does he uh, not take this personal? Um, well, I think he's, first of all, he's still the lieutenant governor till, till January 1st. Mm -hmm. So right. I think you're going to see him immerse himself in his work. Uh, at the same time, I know that the campaign is going to be involved in the election commission meetings and making sure that the votes are counted correctly and reaching a consensus agreement on that. Uh, a lot of that will depend about what the actual margin of difference in the votes is uh, as we're moving forward. And, uh, and after that, he's been in public service for all these years. I think, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he decides to continue to do that and uh, maybe work in his company for two years and think about whether well, he wants to return to public service. You know, we've seen whenever he's had challenges, even in his current career, um, he always sort of ends on a... Uh, classy note. So yeah. I think he's. I think you're right. I think okay, he's really good. Okay, I think we're ready. We're ready. Uh, That's uh, the moment uh, of truth. Let's all right, go. let's go to Jason at UOG Election Central. Jason. All right, thanks so much, guys. The word of the hour here, and this uh, report was printed about 6.54. So as most people are heading to work, kids are going to school, it seems now that we have a definitive answer on the gubernatorial race for decision 2018's general election. Here we are from Calvo Fieldhouse at UOG. 18,081 votes for the Democratic gubernatorial team of Lulian Guerrero and Josh Tenero. That is 50.7% of the ballots that were cast, so that puts it an improvement of about uh, six tenths of a point and that does in fact at least in theory I talked with Pat Seville over there they still have the write-in ballots 8,161 8,161 write-in ballots that is astonishing 23 percent of the vote were write-in candidates um, we'll come back to this in just a moment but let's get you up to speed on the rest of the races in the congressional race Michael Sinicholas had a commanding lead never relinquished it 19,053 votes besting Doris Flores Brooks the Republican and the former public auditor of our great island, 15,263 did Doris get. Um, Michael Sinicholas seems as if he is going to be your next congressional delegate. Remember, these, uh, these results as I'm reading them, pending certification from the Guam Election Commission, that happens in a few days' time. To the legislature, Therese Terlahi in the number one spot, 22,450 votes. She is followed by... Talina Nelson and incumbent at number two, Joe San Augustine at number three, Tina Rose Munya Barnes at number four, and Mary Camacho at number five. All of them with senatorial experience, four of those top five, of course, incumbents. Amanda Shelton is at number six with better than 18,300 votes. Regine Bisco Lee is at number seven with 17,603. Jim Moylan is number eight with 16,376. Louise Munya, 15,777. Clint Rigel finished a very impressive number 10, 15,044 votes for the first time Democrat candidate for senator. Dr. Kelly Marsh Titano, 14,293 votes. She is number 11. Will Castro, the incumbent Republican, 14,280 votes. He is number 12. Sabina Perez, again, she's been a longtime educator, a member of academia. She is a Democrat first time candidate. She is at number 13. Tella Tidegui, a Republican, moving back to the legislature. She is at number 14. And Jose Terlahi is at the number 15 spot. It looks like he is. In, this is where things get interesting now, folks, because things have shifted around around the uh, 14, 15, 16, 17 spot. Um, again, these results pending certification by the GEC. Jose Terlai in at number 15. Sel Babalta at number 16. Adolfo Palacios now slips to 17. 
Um, Jermaine Alerta at 18, Steven Guerrero, Alerta, 19, Ben Servino. Okay, 20, we are going to cut out from Jason. Uh, you know the results, and uh, so do the, <laughs> the Lou and Josh camp. So let's go straight there where Nick Delgado is standing by live. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. History is made. Guam getting its first female governor with Lou and Josh taking it, getting that 50% plus one threshold the candidates now making their way to the stage take a look over here to my right you can see lou making her way up to the stage to speak to her supporters who have been here throughout the night lou and josh very emotional have spent the last hour waiting for those final numbers to come in and here she is ladies and gentlemen our governor elect julian guerrero thank you so much Congratulations. what a great day for what the a, people of guam what a historic day how are you feeling very good, thank you. Very appreciative, very humble, very honored for the everyone, our people, our family. Thank you. Congratulations. All right, so we'll see what they have to say. Lou and Josh and their families too. Right now, Lou and Josh up on stage. There's their supporters that have been here throughout the night. Others making their way here. Early this morning, as the sun was coming up, we were waiting for those numbers to Once come again, in. Once again, we just made our, our governor-elect and our lieutenant governor-elect and their families first. Please. Now what they're doing is after spending the last hour along Marie Corps Drive waiting at that morning rush hour traffic, their family joins them in celebration. Lou expected to make a speech here to supporters down at Change City in Ganya, where we've been all Ladies through the and night and early this morning. This is indeed a beautiful morning for the people of Guam and for the campaign of Lulian Guerrero and Joshua Tenorio and the Democratic Party of Guam. Don't you agree? This is a proud moment for all of us. We're waiting for all the family and friends to make their way to the stage with Lou and Josh as they get ready to make their speech, a speech that has been worked on by their staff here throughout the night and early this morning. Adelouk, here we come, is what one of the supporters shouted yeah, over to the stage. We have, uh, and Josh in the middle, surrounded An by emotional the moment for many out here today. You can see the tears in their eyes, the, the smiles on their faces. Lulian Guerrero uh, we start, said, we're just going to... Just gather to real speak quick to our and supporters. to give first uh, praise and thanks to God for this beautiful day. Yeah. So let's just grab the person pen next to our sister yeah. and our brother. Yep, that's how we do it with you and God. Prayer. Grab the hand next to you real quick. Let's just bow our heads in prayer. Good and gracious God, you truly have broken the morning for us, reminding us of your grace, your love, and your great plan for our people and our island. As we bow our heads, we give you all the praise and the glory for this day, for the great will you have placed in allowing the people of Guam to choose Luli Anguero and Joshua Tenorio to lead us as our governor and lieutenant governor of Guam. Look kindly on us, because we have a lot of work ahead. Now is the time to heal. Now is the time to move forward. Now is the time to bring change that our island so desperately needs. So let us once again look to one another, lean on one another, but most importantly, rely on your word and your will. And we do all the good things for the praise and glory of your great name. 
as one people we say. Amen. Yeah. Viva Lua Josh. Viva Lua Josh. Viva Lua Josh. Oh, and after a quick prayer, thanking everyone for who came out and supported Lulian Guerrero. Now set to address her supporters. Senator Francis Santos, can you please come up here? My uncle, the esteemed statesman, one of the great statesmen of our Democratic Party of Guam, Vice Speaker John Paris Uggen. Of course, our third chair is up there at Election Central, Senator Tom Adda. Our campaign manager, where 
is she? She hates the stage. Connie Jo Benson O'Hara. Ladies and gentlemen, we assembled an excellent team. By the way, every time you heard Lou's ad, you know that it ended with Tony Sanford, our treasurer. Can you please come up with us? We assembled an excellent campaign team. And it wasn't necessarily the people that I just announced. It was all of you out there. From that day last year when we met at the, at the red carpet to announce our plans to you. Throughout a very long and smart campaign, we have met so many awesome, awesome people on this campaign trail. We met Democrats that, are, that were looking for a win. We met Republicans that had more in common with us than the people that were running their party. Yeah. We met independents that just want independents that just want common sense to, for the government to get things done. All of you have been the energy that have really fueled our campaign. And not only did you deliver a win for Lou and I and me, you delivered a win for a supermajority of Democrats in the and for those down here, I want to call them up. Our party chairperson, Senator Regine Biscoli. <laughs> Senator Joe Shimizu Sanagasti. <laughs> Senator elect Amanda Shelton. <laughs> Returning Senator Tina Rose Munya Barr. <laughs> Senator elect Kelly Marsh Tyson. <laughs> but they're going to be part of us. Jermaine Alerta is here. Armando Dominguez is here. Come up here, Armando. Ned Pablo is here. And of course, one of our long-standing advisors, one of my best friends since we met at the age of 15 in the Guam Youth Congress, Senator Rory Respicio is here. Ladies and gentlemen, change is here. Change has arrived. And we promise you we will do our best to make sure that we get a Guam that is fair, safe, compassionate, and prosperous. Thank you very much. Oh, that's the part I like. Joshua said we have food. Okay. Um, I just want to thank uh, my cousin Josh for allowing me to be nephew. nephew. I'll get it right one day. I'm not that old. So I do have one thing in common with Josh. Okay, We share the same birthday. So this time, we're going to have a party. Okay, so again, thank you very much. The work begins now. All right. So again, we're going to be calling on all of you to come out and help us. It's it's not a long walk to Adlu. No, it's actually a nice walk to Adlu. We've been waiting. Okay. And then I do have one request. That's what we're going to sing happy birthday to Governor. By the way, this is the full verse, okay, of Happy Birthday. Her birthday is tomorrow, November 8th. Of course, a lot of excitement going on here as you see well, all those senators, uh, hopefuls, Senator-elect, and our governor, Good. Lieutenant Governor-elect, speaking to supporters, now singing Happy Birthday to our Governor-elect, Lou Leon Guerrero. Of course, a lot of the results that we've been seeing uh, come out from the Guam Election Commission still has to be finalized by the commission. We have yet to hear from uh, the uh, Volta campaign or from the like, Santiago campaign following this announcement and following the speeches that uh, Lou and Josh have just presented to supporters and to all the voters out here and our viewers watching as well.
We have two people whose birthday is today. A lot of promises that these candidates have been making, uh, showing that making a promise that change would be coming for the island. The Democrats taking back Antelope, as they say, uh, bringing up their family and, and others up to the stage. A long night of excitement, keeping their hopes up, keeping optimistic. The faith of everyone here is strong as Luliang Guerrero and Josh Sonorio making history, being elected our next governor, lieutenant governor of Guam. For change, we bless the food that we're about to partake. Heavenly Father, by saying your grace, bless us, O oh Lord. Supporters now getting ready to mingle with their governor and lieutenant governor elects. We will bring you uh, more and some speak with the candidates on all of KUAM social media platforms on KUAM.com Again, your governor elects and lieutenant governor elects Lulia Josh Sonoria, Lulia Guerrero, the first female governor of the territory of Guam. Now, Haganya Guahu Sinek Delgado will throw it to y'all back in the studio. Well, there you go. Um, the speeches, uh, victory speeches, I guess uh, we'll call them. We don't know if uh, we're going to see a concession from uh, l the lieutenant governor. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think that he's going to have to look at the numbers and look at the decision of whether they're going to be trying to get the election commission to go and count the undervotes. And that's the key to a runoff for you mm -hmm. guys. Yeah, well, there, there are over 1,000 undervotes. 1,034. Under, under the rules, it states that if they don't mark the circle, but they write the name, they should be counted as a vote cast. Not for the writing candidate, but just as a vote cast. And um, if, you, if you look into that, two, 200 of those votes is 1% on the vote of this election. So if 200 of those were voted for anything, they put any name there, then, then they should, should qualify. But then the decision would be on the candidate, how he wants to do it, and the election commission would, would have to vote on whether they want to uh, allow them to open them and look at them or not. Right now, the, all they did was do it, run it through the machine, and under the machine, they only counted the ones that had been marked. Uh, they didn't look at the ones that were not marked but could have their names uh, written in. Um, but, but wasn't there but a 2006 a, decision that... And, and that's what's going to be. Them. Them, They're yeah. going to look back at, 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 the, at the Gutierrez decision and, uh, and figure out how to interpret that. Uh, but as of today, as of right now, you know, the election commission is saying that uh, uh, Lou and Josh are our governors and uh, lieutenant governor. Governor and, elect. Uh, so congratulations, you know, governor Madam elect. Governess. Right. Congratulations. Yeah. And, uh, and we have then the first female governor and female legislature. Uh, mm -hmm. I think Guam should be proud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of that, a clean yeah. sweep uh, by the Democrats. I mean, they took Congress, they took the legislature, they took Adeloupe. This would be interesting. <laughs> well, oh, and, the and, and they're all kind of new, so um, right. you know, we wish them all the best. Absolutely, uh, yeah. we don't um, we don't wish any ill, uh, even if we have ideological differences, uh, because we all live here. And again, we wish you all the best. We hope that you do the best for Guam, and uh, we have all the confidence and and we trust the will of the people. Um, and so congratulations to everybody that won. Absolutely. Yeah. Congratulations. Good luck. We all want, yeah, I echo the same sentiments. We want what's best and, yeah. you know, we'll, we, we look forward to the great things that, that will be coming to the island. Yeah, absolutely. The people want to change and here it is. Juan, are we going to get a similar statement from you or are you? No, I, I think I'm congratulating the team on, yeah. on, on, on where they are. There, there's still the final decision of the certification. We need to figure out how many absentee votes were there. And we'll right, look. right. But as of right now, it looks like the next governor is uh, our governor for all people that reside in Guam is uh, Lou and Josh. So we congratulate the team. And, and so what's look next for working together. you guys, the Republicans? You, you having a meeting today? Somebody uh, getting chewed out? 
<laughs> no, I think what we what we need to do is, uh, as, a, as a party, we need to, all, I think both parties are going to do, they're going to look at the results, That's study right. what they are, and say, how do we move forward? Uh, reality is almost 50% of the voters, in, mm -hmm. more than 50%, if we, come, if we count the undervotes by 5%, uh, they didn't vote for the winning team. So now they got to try to figure out how do we bring those together? What caused those individuals not to want to unite under one banner? Or they just say, you know what? Forget you. Should have been in and we're just moving forward. No, I think in, in I think Ms. Victory's yeah. speech, she Wh said whoever, that right. Whoever won, to, whether to it was a Republican yeah. or a Democrat, mm -hmm. they would, they'd have the same to... fundamental question. That's good, how that's are we going to do this? And really after such a um, dividing uh, you know, election season, uh, I think you're right. Let's turn the page and let's uh, you know put our heads together and try and uh, do what's uh, best for Guam. Yeah. You said it's a uh, time for an era of change. So. Yeah. And you know that the one thing which uh, really astonished me in an in in extremely positive way in Guam is that uh, when a tough time comes together, we, we, we the, the island does unite. Mm -hmm. does. Everybody comes in together and says, okay, we need to figure out That's how right. we're going to move through this. What I love about elections on Guam is a week ago it could be like, uh, blah, 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 Ray, <laughs> and then today it's like, hey, good, good. Good race, you know. It was, it was a good one. It was definitely one for the ages, mm -hmm. one for the ages. Thank you guys so much for staying with us. Our pleasure. That was fun. Let's do it again. Just not all night. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, you know, in case we don't see you guys, I uh, want to thank you, of course, for, you know, sharing your time with us uh, this election season. Uh, I really uh, felt like we had a goal to kind of... Uh, raise the conversation about politics on Guam, and we want to thank you guys for uh, allowing us to uh, do that with your, your participation. In the after party, the right. great tea, yeah. the great debate, everything. Thank you so much. All good things come to an end. And I uh, mm -hmm. also want to shout out to our production uh, team, you know, uh, our photogs, the guys, uh, you know, the control room, uh, producers out in the field. Uh, of Sales, course, uh, nice my girl control. Sabrina, who's going to be on a plane here. In a couple of hours, yeah. There you go. So have a good trip. Hey, on behalf of the team, thank you so much for watching KUAM News' Decision 18 coverage. And again, congratulations to the team of uh, Lou and Josh and to all the winners. Uh, hopefully the people of Guam will be big winners uh, too. And, you know, we think so moving forward. Uh, on behalf of our uh, panelists, uh, my partner here, Sabrina, my name's Chris. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great Wednesday, Guam. Esta adios. Special thanks to Jamaican Grill, Yaman Serious Food, McDonald's of Guam, I'm Lovin' It, and CS.